Okay, so I've done videos comparing the Canon M200 with the Sony A5100. I have neither of them in my hand. Canon M200 and the Sony A5100 for streaming as well as their autofocus capabilities and whatnot. We saw that the Sony A5100's autofocus was a little bit faster than the Canon M200. That doesn't change the fact that for me, the Canon M200 has fast become my favorite streaming camera, mainly because I've bought into the Canon ecosystem, but otherwise, it's a very good camera. It's a very good piece of tech. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to set up the Canon M200 for streaming. We're gonna look at what you're gonna need, what settings you're gonna to have to set up on the Canon M200 to make it useful for streaming, and then just connecting it up to OBS and how to get it up and running on your stream. And guys, if you are enjoying my content, I wanna see more of the same, then make sure you guys hit the like, subscribe, and notification bells down below. It really helps out the channel. And if you guys wanna ask me questions about streaming, gaming, tech, coronavirus vaccines, I don't know what's the what's what's trending right now. I, I I honestly don't know. Anything. You wanna ask me questions about anything? Head over to my Twitch. Hit me up with a follow there. I do stream several times a week. You can also join my Discord server, which I've set up brand new. Links are down in the description box below to both my Discord, Twitch, as well as all my other social medias. So get clicking, get following, get joining. Before I get started with showing you exactly what settings you're gonna to need to tweak on the Canon M200 to get it ready for streaming, there are a couple of things that you're gonna to need to get hold of. So firstly, is obviously the camera itself, Canon M200. Secondly, you're gonna need one of these bad boys. And this is a capture card, a cheap USB 2.0 capture card. It basically replaces the cam link you can get a cam link if you want, if you want to spend over 140 pounds, 140 dollars. I don't know how much the cam link costs right now because I've not looked into it. But if you do want to get one, by all means. But this does the job. It outputs at 1080p 30. I've done a review of these cheapo cam link knockoffs before. But it is a HDMI capture card, so it does do the job perfectly well. And this is pretty much what I use anyway. Next up, you're going to need a HDMI to HDMI micro, HDMI mini, micro? I think it's a micro. You're gonna need a HDMI micro to HDMI cable so that you can connect your camera up to your capture card. Lastly guys, you are gonna need a dummy battery. Dummy battery is very important because otherwise your camera is gonna run out of juice if you just use the stock battery that the camera comes with. Um, you can pick these things up from Amazon for relatively cheap. Um, I've got this one that is just a USB cable that plugs right into the battery like that and then the usb side you can plug into any old usb charger or even your computer and then through that you can power your camera uh, for an unlimited time i do suggest plugging it into a usb power adapter uh, plug though because it will just run better and you're not going to have less issues if you can pick up the genuine dummy battery then do so but you can get these for pretty cheap on amazon i will put all my links to the products in the description box below. These are Amazon affiliate links, just so you guys know. All right, so let's get on with the setting. So once you've turned your camera on, um, if you hit the menu button, it will take you directly into the camera's menu settings. Now, I'm not gonna do initial setup and all of that. Now, if you are in the camera's settings, the first menu that you wanna go to is the shoot menu. So in the shoot menu, you're gonna wanna go to move your record quality and then move your record size. And you wanna select FHD, 29.97 or FHD 59.94, depending on your preference. I tend to shoot at 30 FPS. I tend to stream my camera at 30 FPS. So I would usually select the FHD 29.97p. Um, however, if you guys want to stream at 60 FPS, then you can do so. Um, just make sure that when you do that, your shutter speed is set to double. So if you're shooting at 30 FPS, make sure your shutter speed is set to uh, 160th. If you're shooting at 60 FPS, make sure your shutter speed is set to 125 as the closest um, shutter speed to uh, being double your FPS. Once you set your resolution and frame rate, what you wanna do is you wanna move along to the third option. Make sure your auto light optimizer is turned off. Uh, make sure your highlight tone priority is turned off. Make sure your ISO speed settings are default. Uh, you do want to use manual controls as much as possible for everything. Again, with white balance, uh, you want to set the white balance to uh, whatever settings work for you. Right now, mine is set to 5600. That is the white balance that works with the lighting that I have set up. That might be different for you. So do go in and check the white balance or check the white balance temperature that it's set to and uh, set it to whatever fits your need. Picture style, I usually keep it at standard or portrait. 
and, and that works well for me. Again, it's all dependent on your preferences, how you want your stream to look. So you can set that to whichever of the options work best for you. Next is the autofocus. You can keep the servo autofocus on in this if you're gonna be using autofocus with your lens and your camera on your stream. However, I tend to use manual focus with the lens that I use on stream. So um, that's again, up to personal preference. If you wanna use autofocus, you can do, but while you're streaming, you're really gonna be moving around a lot. So I just tend to keep it on manual focus, set it up and then just kind of leave it where it is. Then in that fifth section, you wanna go back down to HDMI info display. And this is the big important one. You wanna select HDMI info display and then scroll down to clean FHD output. And what that basically does is that once your camera is plugged in through the HDMI and capture card and feeding into OBS, it doesn't show any of the additional information or the autofocus box or anything like that that shows up on screen. That's the biggest benefit of having this camera and cameras like this that have clean HDMI for streaming. You don't wanna be able to stream with any of that extra jargon on your screen. So the clean HDMI output does help you set that. Next, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your camera doesn't turn off on you. Uh, regardless of you having an unlimited battery supply with the dummy battery, um, there is an auto turn off option on this. So you wanna make sure you go to the setup option within your menu. Uh, it's in the second folder and it's power saving. You're gonna to go to power saving and make sure that auto power off is disabled. Um, now, usually that's gonna be disabled as soon as you enter clean HDMI out. However, as a precaution before you set the clean HDMI out, I would always go into that section, turn off the auto power off, extend your um, display off time to 30 minutes and leave it like that. And then go back and turn your clean HDMI on again, just as a precaution, because you don't know, um, you know technology has a mind of its own sometimes. That's what we're worried about, isn't it? AI taking over, machines conquering the globe, humans becoming redundant and useless, jobs lost, mass wars, and the machines conquering the world. Wait, that's the plot to Terminator. Anyway, so once you've done all of that, you wanna go to your camera and toggle from the top to the little camera icon there. And what that basically puts it in is movie mode. You want your camera set to movie mode so that you can fully control everything uh, that your camera is doing. From there, you wanna set your shutter speed to 1 60th. Depending on the lens you've got, you wanna set your uh, aperture to as low as it can get. And then set your ISO depending on the brightness of your room, as well as your aperture and shutter speed. And just basically gauge how it looks uh, on your camera and on the screen. So now that you've done all of that with the settings, let's go and actually set up the camera to work through OBS. Right, so I've moved over here to my desk so I can show you guys exactly how to set this thing up. First thing you wanna do is replace the main battery with the dummy battery. So I'm just gonna do that quickly here. So let's pop the dummy battery in, slide it in. Then at the bottom here, you've got the slot that opens your uh, battery cover. What you wanna do is you wanna peel that rubber slot off and it will reveal uh, an opening for you to connect your uh, power cable, I guess you call it, um, into the battery. So that allows you to connect the power cable into the battery. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna pop your power cable either into the PC or into uh, any sort of power supply that you so wish. So I've popped it into the PC and as you can see, I've got power on the camera now. Now, next thing you wanna do is you wanna take your HDMI to micro HDMI cable and plug the HDMI side into your capture card. Plug it into your capture card and then you wanna plug the capture card into a USB slot on your PC. I generally tend to plug it into a USB 3.0 slot just for the sake of it because regardless of it being USB 2.0, I don't wanna anything else limiting the input that's going in, but it should work perfectly fine in a USB 2.0 slot, I'm just precautious. That's cool. Either way, it works absolutely flawlessly, so you shouldn't have any problems with that. So what you wanna do once you're all ready is take the micro HDMI side of the HDMI cable and plug it into your camera. So if you open the left side of the camera uh, where it says HDMI, um, you'll see that at the top, there is a HDMI slot. There is a micro HDMI slot right there. Um, can you see it? Yes, you can. You wanna plug in your micro HDMI cable into that slot and it will start feeding your camera into OBS. So we're gonna shift over to OBS here 
and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. Once you're in OBS, what you want to do is you want to go to your sources section here at the bottom and click the plus button and then click video capture device. Once you've selected video capture device, you can rename that whatever you want. So I'm going to just rename it uh, Canon M200, uh, press OK. And then it's going to give you an option of which device to select. Now, usually it will come up as a USB video or USB uh, video device. Um, I think for this capture card, it comes up as USB video. So I'm going to give that one a try. There we go. It's come up as USB video and you can see on the screen that as I move the camera, um, it's picking up everything that we've got there. So that's perfect. Then you want to go to the resolution FPS type, type in custom, and we want to put it in as 1920 by 1080, and then your FPS set to 30, just so you're sure. Um, you can set it to highest or highest output FPS. Um, I tend to kind of keep it at 30, just so that it, it works um, the best. So then you want to click OK, and what you will be able to do is move and resize your camera feed any way that you want. So as you can see, despite the camera having all of the camera info on the screen, when you're looking at it through OBS, there is none of that. And what you've got is you've got an absolute clean feed of my nice hand there, right? And that's all there is to it. Now, once you've got your overlays and everything, all you need to do is resize your camera feed however you want to fit it. And Bob's your uncle. Well, he might not be, but... Um, you, you get the expression, right? And that's it, guys. Very simple, step-by-step, -step, exactly how to set up your Canon M200 for streaming. This is one of the best cheap streaming cameras that you can get. It has fantastic quality. I've had absolutely no problems with it. It is a fantastic camera. Most of my streams have been done with this, especially with a wide angle uh, view. Now, rather than getting a more expensive camera than this, this is an absolutely perfect camera for streaming. It's perfect for beginners. It's perfect if you're on a budget, but you still want that mirrorless DSLR clean camera look in your stream, then this is absolutely the perfect buy. You know, the Sony A5100 right now is another fantastic camera. However, the M200 in my eyes is probably just a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit more dated, uh, despite the water focus not being as good. Anyway guys, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit a like down there. And if you want to comment any improvements, any suggestions, then feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. Until next time, Kai24 signing out. You think I should become a view the VTuber? Sorry, I'm losing my speech. Uh, Margo, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. Uh, you think I should become a VTuber? Do you think I'd look, I think I'd look good as a VTuber? I need to be very entertaining. VTubers don't stop moving and dancing and doing all these weird things. I've seen some really cool VTubers out there. It's pretty fun. It seems pretty fun. I wouldn't have to show my face, which I'm okay with. I've got a nice face, so uh, I don't mind. But um, I have to create a very good looking avatar to become a good, successful VTuber, wouldn't I?